hi students how are you hope you all are fine so welcome to the kalvi tv video lessons today we are going to learn a new lesson from the first unit the title is from the prose section the title is two gentlemen of verona by archpal joseph cronen before going into the lesson we shall learn about the author archbal joseph cronin who is he archbal joseph cronin is shortly called as aj cronin he was born in the year 1896 and died in the year 1981 he was a scottish novelist dramatist and a physician physician means he is a doctor he is a surgeon a doctor by training cronin was one of the most renowned storytellers of the 20th century what happened how he became a writer a doctor became a writer that to a prolific successful writer in the year 1930 Cronin was diagnosed with chronic duodenal ulcer maybe near the stomach some kind of disease for that doctor and uh, he was told to take rest for 6 months only taking milk diet in the countryside so at that time while he was taking rest he was finally able to indulge in his lifelong desire to write a novel earlier he wrote only prescriptions scientific research papers now he started to write novels short stories at that time in a span of 3 months he composed his first novel hatter's castle that became a huge success his medical career changed and his style of his still skill of narrative writing his deep social conscience and finely drawn characters appreciated by many critics throughout the world okay some of his books which are very popular and they are all best sellers among them are the citadel and the keys of the kingdom this two stories have been filmed and telecasted in tvs particularly in the bbc radio and bbc tv series that's how aj cronen become a powerful and successful writer after choosing writing as his career he never returned back to practicing medicine okay students this is all about aj cronen let's move to the title the title here is two gentlemen of verona you have learned plays of william shakespeare poems of william shakespeare and two gentlemen of verona is one of the earliest plays of william shakespeare inspired by the title age cronen chose this title for his short story and the play is verona it's a city in italy and there this aj cronen he went for some kind of experience there and there he was affected by some memories two gentlemen of verona is a memoir of aj cronen what is memoir memoir is a past experience or personal experience of a writer just that is recollecting of his personal experiences personal memories okay 
let's have a warm up session and what the story is about life is full of ups and downs it has pleasant surprises as well as rude shocks however every incident offers a lesson for us to learn and evolve into better individuals okay students if you look at your book in the warm up section the first question we have just look at that question some unexpected challenges or adversities what is adversities some problems things which are difficult or unpleasant experiences that one could face in life i repeat what are the unexpected challenges one could face in life can you name it yes like accidents business loss sudden death poverty war and now the throughout the world the world is experiencing covid 19 pandemic right the second question what qualities do you think one should possess to handle hardships and overcome them right yes so hope hard work yes okay let's come to the story the story is about love devotion sacrifice responsibility sincerity and maturity of the two characters who are the characters in this story one is the two brothers nicolo and jacopo the other is the narrator then the narrator's driver luigi and nicolo's and nicolo and jacopo's sister lucia and a nurse okay just moving into the story we shall have the we shall understand what is the outline of the story two young boys they work very hard and do different jobs and they showcase an unusual devotion towards their work and family the two young gentlemen of verona face their difficulties head on without a single complaint the title is quite justified by aj cronan okay let us find out who are the two real gentlemen of verona right the story begins at the foothills of alps do you know where alps is it's located in the central europe stretching across several countries france italy germany austria and another three countries the story starts there if you want you can turn to your page number 1 first paragraph the narrator with his companions travels towards verona at the foothills of verona at the foothills of alps two small boys selling wild strawberries and they stopped near the boys the narrator wanted to purchase wild strawberries but the narrator's driver luigi warned the narrator don't buy we will get better fruit in verona he shrugged his shoulders he shrugged his shoulders rising his shoulders don't buy this we'll get better one there because these boys look very shabby and uh, the two boys one boy had a own jersey and a cut off cocky pants the other he wore a loose outer garment and he was very skinny 
It was very lean. Yet, gazing at the two little figures with their brown skins, tangled hair, and dark, earnest eyes, the two boys were strangely attracted for the narrator. He wanted to buy a basket from these two little boys. The narrator's companion, he discovered that these two boys are, one is Nicola, he is 13 years old, another one is Jacopa, who is 12 years old. So before leaving to Alps, they bought a big basket and started towards the town. Okay, towards the page number two. Next morning, coming out of the hotel, the narrator saw the friends, the two boys, shining shoes beside the fountain in the public square. They are doing brisk business in the morning. The narrator watched for a few moments. Then the trade reduced. He went near to the boys. The boys greeted them with friendly faces. Hi, sir. With friendly faces, he greeted them. Again, the narrator was impressed. Next, what happened? The narrator was impressed. He went near to the boys. I thought you picked fruit for a living, said the narrator. And the reply from the boys was, Sir, we do many things. Niccolo answered very seriously. He glanced at them hopefully for doing some business. Sir, often we show visitors through the town. We contact tourists. If you want, we will take you to Juliet's tomb. It's a famous place. It's a guided tourist to know about William Shakespeare and other places of interest. The narrator was ready. All right, smiled the narrator. You take us along. We shall move. Let's move. And so the place you are watching in this slide is Juliet's grave, one of the famous place in Verona. Right. And these two boys took the narrator around Verona. The narrator's interest provoked by their remarkable demeanor, appearance, their way of behavior. Though they were childish, in many ways they were innocent. Chakapa was lively as a squirrel. Nicola's smile was steady and engaging. That can be seen in the text of your page number two. Yet, there was some seriousness in their face, beyond their ears. Nicola is 13 years old, Chakapa is 12 years old, but their faces, their faces are quite serious. In the following weeks, they were extremely useful by buying things, running errands, and even reserving seats at the opera, choosing a good restaurant, satisfying all our needs. The narrator was happy with these two boys. Here is a slide about opera. Opera is an open theatre. Right. What happened? The narrator got impressed by the two young boys. They have that spirit, willingness to work. Under the hot sun, they worked a lot. Early morning, they shined shoes, then sold fruits. They hawked newspapers. They conducted tourists and they 
ran errands, delivering, collecting things. They did all jobs in Verona. Right. What happened then? One night, the narrator saw the boys in the windy and deserted square, resting on the stone pavement beneath the lights. Nicola sat upright, looking very tired because of the daily work. At his feet, there was a bundle of unsold newspapers. Jacoba, resting his head upon his brother's shoulder, was asleep. It was nearly midnight. The narrator came there and found this boys. The narrator asked them, Why are you so late, Nicola? Working in the midnight? The reply from the boys was, Sir, we are waiting for the last bus from Padua. We have to sell all our papers and it comes in. We are waiting for that. So till midnight, the two boys work a lot. The narrator asks them, Must you work so hard? You both look tired. Why do you work so hard? Why? What's the reason? And the boys replied, Sir, we are not complaining. We are not tired. We are not complaining. Again, the narrator was very much impressed. Okay. Then, next morning, near the fountain, he inquired the same Nicola and Jacopa near that fountain. They both were polishing shoes. Okay, boys, you earn a lot by doing many jobs, but you earn a lot. When I find you eating meals, you were eating only black bread and figs, and you don't wear proper clothes. Why? For what purpose you save money? The narrator asked him. What do you do with the earned money? Why don't you spend on your clothes? Why don't you eat good meal? Nicola grew pale and looked to the ground. Again the narrator asked them, Are you both saving to emigrate to America? They laughed. The reply was, Sir, we should greatly like to go to the States, but here at present, they have other plans. Huh? The narrator asked them, What plans? Nicola smiled and uncomfortably answered in a low voice, Just plans, sir. He did not reveal anything. Okay, boys. On Monday, that is day after tomorrow, we are leaving from Verona. What can I do for you? What help can I do for you? Suddenly, Jacoba, a small boy, said, Sir, every Sunday we make a visit to the country to Polita, 30 kilometers from here. Usually, we ride by hiring bicycles. But tomorrow, since you are so kind, tomorrow is Sunday, you are so kind, you might send us in your car. Check about the small little boy, he was very curious. The narrator answered, yes, okay, I have asked my driver, Luigi, to take rest. So I will drive you out myself. I will come with you. Nicola was vexed. He again asked the narrator, Sir, we don't want to trouble you. Are we troubling you? 
no problem no troubles so the following afternoon on sunday they drove to the tiny village set high upon the hill side narrator imagined that their destinations would be some humble dwellings in the hill side but directed by jacoba we drew up at a large red roof villa surrounded by a hilly high stone wall they went near to a red roofed villa the narrator could not believe his eyes and before he could recover his breath the two passengers nikola and chakaba leaped from the car and they went inside the red roof villa sir we will back soon just wait for an hour we'll back and they ran into the red roofed villa and he was waiting after a few minutes the narrator followed them and went inside there he met a nurse the red roof villa is a hospital the two boys were seated at the bedside of a girl of about 20 years who propped upon pillows wearing a pretty lace jacket was listening to the chatter her eyes soft and tender she resembled like her brothers so the girl both the boys met yes their sister lucia the nurse the nurse murmured sir do you want to go in lucia will be pleased to see you oh no the narrator shook his head and turned away he felt he should not disturb this family party but at the foot of the staircase he drew up and beg the nurse to tell him all she knew about these two boys the nurse explained nikola chakapa and sister lucia their father a widower a well known singer had been killed in the early part of the war shortly after the bomb had destroyed their home and thrown the three children into the streets they had suffered horribly from near starvation and exposure to the cold winter they were homeless they built a small shelter with rubbles pieces of cloths and broken bricks then for 3 years the germans ruled the city the boys grew to hate the germans when the resistance movement began secretly to form they were among the first to join when the war was over we had peace at last they came back to their beloved sister and they found her suffering from tuberculosis of the spine they were disappointed they brought her here persuaded us to take her into the hospital in the 12 months she has been our patient she has made good progress because of these two little boys there is every hope that one day their sister will walk and sing again like their father the nurse again said these boys paid the fees regularly i don't know how they paid it because after the war work is very scarce in verona learning all these things 
the narrator waited outside the boys rejoined and then they all drew back to the city while traveling the narrator did not speak a word he just preferred to feel that they had safely kept their secret their devotion had touched the narrator deeply edwin knew hence the story war had not broken their spirit their selfless action brought a new nobility to human life gave promise of a greater hope for human society that's all about the story and the message from the story the message that we get from the two gentlemen of verona is one should face one one's adversities with courage and determination it also teaches that behind the soiled faces and torn clothes lie souls that are pure full of love and self sacrifice okay students i think you enjoyed the story better if you read the story from your textbook you too will enjoy the spirit of the two little boys here is a recapitulation of the story the first question who did the narrator meet at the outskirts of verona can you tell me yes nicolo and jacopo what were the various jobs undertaken by the little boys yeah they sold the fruits they shined the shoes and they hawked the newspapers they helped the tourists good okay the third one how was the family affected by the war they lost their father they were homeless because of that in the open winter their sister was affected by tuberculosis okay why didn't the boys disclose their problem to the author and they might have begged for help they did not beg any help because they don't want sympathy from the author from the narrator okay then so we shall have a short summary of that story it will be helpful for writing your paragraphs nicolo and jacopo or brothers lost their father and home because of war they worked very hard saved money for their sister they did many jobs like selling newspapers fruits acting as tourist guide polishing shoes etc they showed total devotion to their work and family with hard work and love human beings can combat difficult situation okay finally the outcome the qualities that we have to possess to handle hardships and overcome the hurdles are question which i asked you in the warm up session right perseverance optimism cheerfulness honesty compassion as long as people are willing to make sacrifices for the well being of others that is hope for humanity with this we end the first pro section two gentlemen of verona thank you very much in the next video we shall learn about the vocabularies and the other parts in the second episode thank you very much have a nice day thank you நிகழ்ச்சியை பற்றிய தங்களின் மேலான கருத்துக்களை கீழ்கண்ட முகவரிக்கு கடிதம் மூலமாகவோ மின்னஞ்சல் மூலமாகவோ 
குறுஞ்செய்தி மூலமாகவோ தெரியப்படுத்தலாம் அனுப்ப வேண்டிய முகவரி சிறப்பு அலுவலர் கல்வி தொலைக்காட்சி எட்டாம் தளம் அண்ணா நூற்றாண்டு நூலகம் காந்தி மண்டப சாலை கோட்டூர்புரம் சென்னை ஆறு லட்சத்து எண்பத்தி ஐந்து தொலைபேசி எண் ஏழு எட்டு இரண்டு நான்கு பூஜ்ஜியம் ஒன்று ஐந்து பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம்